Hello and welcome to today's Spotlight training session. My name is Rebecca and I'm the Communications Executive at Serra Consultancy. Today's Spotlight training is going to focus on how to use Facebook to promote your digital archive. It's going to be um, quite a short session, just 10 minutes, um, a basic introduction, um, but I'm also going to provide you with some further links to go away with and explore. Um, the the agenda um, for today's presentation is going to be as follows. Um, first of all, we're going to look at the purpose for the session, so the background in terms of Facebook, um, the number of users, um, and how um, the channel relates to uh, library use. Um, then I'm going to look at the makeup of Facebook page, um, some of the important information um, that it's uh, good to include in your page. Then I'm going to move on to a couple of quick wins um, to do with promoting your Facebook page, that's things like creating a call to action and um, and then two forms of um, Facebook advertising. You've got promoting your Facebook page which, which aims to increase Facebook likes in order to build your initial audience and then how to boost your Facebook posts which is promoting specific um, content. Uh, both to existing audience and beyond that. Uh, but I'll also do a little introduction to the different types of Facebook advertising because there's quite a lot on offer. Um, and then, as I said earlier, we're going to look at some of the, the other resources you can go on to, to explore. Um, so thanks very much for um, attending today's session and let's get started. Today's session is looking at Facebook as an advertising platform and as a tool for reaching out to your library service users and also maintaining regular contact with them. So initially I wanted to look at Facebook as a platform and the sort of volume of users that it has at the moment. As I'm sure you know, um, it's the most used social platform in the world and that equates to 1.44 billion active monthly users and 936 million daily users. In terms of the student population, um, the vast majority of undergraduate level are of a young age and they're likely to have grown up with Facebook as an integral part of their, their social life and the likelihood that they're on Facebook is, is very high. So I think in terms of targeting that, that population, I think Facebook is a, is, a very, is a key tool. I then went on and did a little bit of research looking at public and academic library Facebook accounts to see what kind of content it was that they were sharing. Um, there was quite a few strands. Um, obviously there were things like information about events, that were coming up. Um, Facebook's a great way to, to advertise that and people um, can also sign up to events if you create um, an event page, um, which is quite easy to do through Facebook. Um, then um, there were some more creative strands, so looking at um, anniversaries of high profile publishing dates. Recently, the British Library has done a lot of work around Magna Carta, sharing resources and hosting special events, and they've used Facebook to advertise those. Then also things like authors' birthdays and other historical events. A lot of libraries use creative images of authors or quotes. Um, again, it's just a way of engaging with followers around something that um, everyone uh, is interested in um, to do with their literary and academic resources. Then um, obviously more practical things like um, library service opening times. If you're going to be closed, um, at a certain time of year or for a certain period of time. It's a good way of communicating that to service users because it's more likely they're going to be able to come across that on Facebook as opposed to walking past because they might not be on campus. They could be a distance learner, it could be uh, things like that. And then also, um, it's quite similar, but um, updates in relation to uh, key academic times of the year, so when exams run and things like that, that affects accessibility. Uh, another quick note is that um, there's some debate in library circles about how much um, library users are actually interested in followed libraries on Facebook, if that's over-exaggerated or overstated somewhat. And there also might be some issues around copyright. So um, I've linked to a daily magazine article which analyses some of these problems and also the way that users interact with libraries on Facebook and also analyse a lot of comments. So I think that might be a really useful thing uh, to look at. So I just wanted to take a quick look at a typical Facebook page layout. I'm sure the vast majority of people listening will have used Facebook before and have a Facebook profile themselves. So they'll probably be familiar with this. But just to give a quick overview, the main two images on your Facebook page are your profile image and your cover image. And your profile really is, profile photo, sorry, is really the place to up 
upload your university logo or your academic institution's logo or if the library has one themselves but it's really key that it's the most identifiable uh, sort of logo or visual identity that relates to you because it's often the main way that people will be able to find you in a Facebook search so they'll look for that image as, a, as an indicator that, that you're the account that they're looking for. Then you've got your cover image which is it, it is, is often used by by organisations and brands to reflect a little bit of their personality a touch more. So it could be an image of the outside of the building, it could be a particular room in, in the library that's very impressive, or it could be something more creative. So it could be, I've seen libraries um, have a, a wide shot of, of the spines of books on a, on a bookcase. It's really an opportunity for you to be creative and just put across the sort of ethos and the kind of learning environment um, that your library creates for users. Then you've got your um, about information, which on the left hand side below the number of likes that your page has. That's really just a place to put a pithy strap line about your library and some basic information as well as a, a website address. Facebook's quite intuitive when it comes to editing your information. So in order to do that, what you do is you just hover over the grey um, headline bar at the top of each section and in the right hand corner a little pencil will pop up if you click on that that'll take you through to a next another page where you can edit your information and that's normally the case for most of Facebook's features there's also some new things that Facebook's introduced this year things like a call to action which this site actually doesn't have but if you look where where it says like and also share on the cover image um, alongside that you can install a button which provides a call to action to go through to your website or, or a sign up page, things like that. Then you've got page apps, which appear on the left hand side of the page underneath your about section. They're links to external pages that you can install um, for particular sections of your website that you'd like to direct people to or particular services. And I'm gonna to link to how you can do that um, later in the presentation. And then finally, you've got your timeline, which makes up the majority of your profile. That's where you post all of your content to. Again, there's a lot of options when it comes to posting content. So you can schedule things into the future. You can also backdate things. You can also pin things to the top of your profile, which is what this particular user have done, has done. Sorry, In the left-hand corner, in the right-hand corner, sorry, there's an orange bookmark, and that indicates that that content's been pinned to the top. So every time a user goes onto that page, that will appear at the top. So if you've got an upcoming event or a particularly important piece of information that you need to get across, that's a good tool to use for making sure that's seen by your users. So the first step-by-step step that I'm going to show you is how to create a call to action for your Facebook profile. So as, as I said previously, this is a really nice tool for directing um, your followers through to your uh, website or perhaps um, through to a sign-up page where they can register for access to, to your um, archive or any other sort of landing page that is um, that is key to you and you want to drive traffic to. If you don't already have an existing call to action on your Facebook page, um, as this profile for Sunny Sidebar um, doesn't, then you will have a pop-up button appear, as has been outlined in red, um, to indicate to you that you can create one. If you uh, click on that button, you will get a pop-up, which will give you a number of options in terms of what your call to action will say. So you can have things like book now, contact us, use app, play a game, shop now, sign up, watch video, or visit website. So that gives an indication of your different options. And then you are asked to supply a URL to go along with that with that phrase. And it's as simple as that really. But again, the other the other source um, for your website is, is a little bit obscure on the left hand side. It kind of gets lost a little bit. So this is just a, an immediate um, sort of indication of where users can click to go through to your website, or or again another service that you want to you want to highlight. We're going to take a look now at Facebook advertising. As I mentioned earlier, there's quite a few different types of advertising that you can employ on Facebook, and it all really depends on the objective for your campaign. So if you're wanting to drive people to your website, there's uh, options for doing that. Equally, if you want to boost, con um, boost the content of your post, so you want to make the 
information you're posting to Facebook more visible to users. That's another option. Then you've got things like promoting your page, which is a tool for literally just increasing the amount of likes that you have on your page. So boosting your social media uh, following on that platform. Then if you've got sort of specific products like um, apps or you want to um, in increase engagement with your app, there's tools for that as well. Then um, based on location services around mapping, you've got options for boosting your results on those kinds of searches. Uh, again, you can um, focus specifically on promoting events. And then if you've got any offers or discounts, things like that. And then again, video content. So it really does depend on what it is that you're trying to promote um, and, and the type of media that you're that you're using in that particular post. And some of the advantages of Facebook advertising is that you can be highly uh, controlled when you do it. So you can set very specific budgets, you can select very specific time frames, and you can also drill down into the different user groups that are on Facebook. So if there's a particular geographical area that you want to target, a particular age group, um, and you can also target ba people based on their likes and interests as well. So that, that could be pages that they've liked, but it could also be information they've posted um, to their Facebook page and also that they've listed in their about section. So there's there's quite a lot of ways you can target people. And I've also linked to the Facebook advert um, center on the website, which is a really useful tool um, to look at as well. So now we're gonna take a look at Facebook advertising in more detail and how to set up your adverts. The two that I'm focusing on for this presentation is how to increase your Facebook likes and how to boost your Facebook content. The reason that I'm focusing on those two is that they are essentially quick wins. They're really easy to set up. Um, they're based on either promoting existing content, so things that you will go into put on your page anyway, and then essentially your Facebook page itself. So there's no need to create any additional content. They're also um, really manageable in terms of setting them up and then kind of letting them get on with it. They don't need constant monitoring. You can just kind of check on the results at the end of the advert. But for someone that's got a lot of other responsibilities, they can kind of have peace of mind that these adverts are ticking over, but they're on budget and they're, they're, they're within, a, within certain constraints that you set up. So in order to promote your Facebook page, which again is, um, is a system for increasing the number of likes in your audience, all you have to do is click on the promote page, which you'll find on the left hand side column and uh, point a little red arrow to it, but, it, but it's quite obvious anyway. And um, so if you click on there, it will take you through to a page where you essentially set up your advert. So this is the page that you'll be directed to when you create a Facebook page advert. And it gives you um, a few options of previewing your advert. So you'll be able to see what the advert will look like on your desktop and um, on a mobile feed and also in the right hand column of Facebook as well where a lot of advertisements pop up and um, you can choose to um, upload a particular image um, which I've pointed the arrow to or you can use an image which will automatically be generated because it'll be it's the cover image that you've got on your Facebook page then uh, underneath where you select your image there's a text box that's where you post um, a strap line um, about your Facebook page and about your service. There's actually, um, I think it's a 90 character limit on that text box because Facebook wants to keep it quite simple and quite straightforward. Um, and, and that's the reason it imposes a character limit. Below that is um, a section where you set up your audience. So there's, there's various um, options under this section. The first being location. Um, so if you if you choose not to fill this out, then it'll just be nationwide, so it'll be the United Kingdom. But if you're wanting to focus on a specific geographical area or region or county, then you just enter that in and Facebook will target will target that area. Below that, there's interests. So you can enter um, between four and ten interests. Um, they can be um, specific pages, so um, 
the university's uh, Facebook page, for example, or it can be more abstract than that. It can be uh, subjects, it can be um, genres, it can be really broad things like education um, or news, things like that. Um, but but things that relate to the sort of the, the, the service that your digital archive provides would be best for that. The other options in terms of audience when you're setting up your Facebook advert is age, so you can target a particular demographic um, or you can um, set it at the, the widest parameters. So I think the lowest age for Facebook use is 13 and it goes, well I, I imagine it has, it has no, no end actually, so you can target pretty much every age if you want to or be more specific. Then you've got uh, gender, which is self-explanatory there. And then below that, this is where you set your budget. So how it works is you have a daily budget um, and that's based on an estimated number of likes that you'll accrue. So they can't say um, for certain that you'll get 19 likes, but they can guarantee that you'll get at least five with the possibility of up to 19. And that's for three pounds um, a day. If you click on the drop down box, you get lots of different options. So there's various increments. Um, obviously, the more that you're willing to spend on a daily basis, the, the more likes it is that you're likely to accrue. But you can also set that um, specifically if you have a, a particular budget as well. So this a screenshot is a continuation of the setting up of your Facebook advert. Below where you select your budget, you can schedule the time frame that you want your advert to run over. So Facebook gives you the option of 7, 14 and 28 days. But you can also customise this and set your advert to run to a particular date. Once um, you've used up those, those days or you've reached that particular date, your advert will cut off automatically and you will stop spending um, any of your budget and then um, below that there's um, the section where you enter your account information that's all, all straightforward there as well if for any reason you wanted to end your facebook advert before the the date that you'd set all you need to do is go to your facebook home page and then on the the top left hand side there is a list of um, options and pages that you can go through one of those is adverts manager if you click on that that section there that takes you through to your dedicated advertising space that will list all the adverts that you've run and it will give you the option to end the advert then and there so that's always there if for any reason um, you want to discontinue it now we're going to look at boosting your facebook content so this advertising mechanism is designed for um, promoting content that you've already posted to your profile um, to a wider audience. So it could be that you want your existing followers to see that you're running a particular event, but you also want other Facebook users that don't already follow you to see that as, um, as well. So it's a really good way of repurposing your content and doubling up on the number of people that are going to see it. And again, this is quite a straightforward um, advert to run. All you need to do is once you've posted the content in the bottom right hand corner, a boost post button appears and you need to select that and that will take you through to the next stage of setting up your advert. So once you click on the boost, um, your post button, you'll be taken through to this screen, which looks fairly similar to the previous screen that we looked at where you were advertising your Facebook page. You get the same option to view your advert in desktop and in mobile feed. The way that you set up your advert when you're boosting content is slightly different. Um, in terms of an audience, you get three different options. You can, if you did want, just um, target the people that already like your page. Um, this is useful when you want to guarantee that your users see a particular post, because it might be the case that you post in, morning, in the morning traditionally, but actually your users access Facebook at night. So it's a way of making sure that your post is continually shared with that user. Equally, you can target people who already like your page and their friends who are likely to have same interests and perhaps go to the same university and use um, and use the same um, digital archive and library service. Or the third option is to um, target um, people specifically. So this is the same as when we promoted the Facebook page. If you click on the option, um, a drop down will appear that gives you um, further options to select. So 
um, you can choose geographical location, age, sex and interests um, and that, that appears um, the same as previously. Um, so they're the three options that you have in terms of setting your audience. Below that you've got budget and duration. So again you've got different increments from Facebook, different amounts that indicate um, how many people you reach but again you can set that um, to a specific budget if you have one. And um, we're going to go on to the next slide now, which will show you the next few steps. So now we're on to duration, so the period that you would like your advert to run, uh, to run for. Um, in terms of boosting content, um, it's slightly different. So there's a limit on seven days that you can boost your content for. And that's because Facebook like you to refresh your content fairly regularly. So they don't want you to be able to advertise a post for an extended period of time. But the likelihood is that your followers will log on at some point within that seven day period. So they, so they will be targeted um, with, with that post. Um, you're not going to um, lose um, too many views because it's a shorter period of which you can advertise it. And then once you've selected um, the number of days you'd like to advertise your post for, the account information that you've already entered um, to promote your Facebook page should automatically appear. But if it doesn't, that's the space in which you enter that again. So we've reached the end of today's Spot Life training. I hope it's been useful for you. I know you've had a lot of information thrown at you, so it might be worth um, going back and taking a look at things again. But um, if you've got any particular questions, um, you're more than welcome to um, drop me an email. I'll try and answer those for you. My email address is Rebecca, which is 1b2cs at cero.co.uk. Before I go away, I just wanted to leave you with some useful links and tools for Facebook. The first one is the official Facebook Help Center. So that's um, a customer service um, so inquiry system where you can ask questions, um, but there's also a lot of community generated support there. So you'll find that if there's a question you've got, usually someone's asked it before and there's lots of useful answers. There's also um, help, helpful sort of how to guides and step by steps as well. So I'd really recommend that. Then you've got a link to setting up an events tab on your profile, um, which is which was really handy um, and a good way of directing people to that um, in a more obvious way. Then you've got um, Facebook's advertising service. So that's the hub for anything to do with adverts. It gives you lots of how to's and um, also case studies of successful advertising and news as well. So if there's any particular questions you've got, you might be wondering what the best way to advertise your pages and um, there's lots of information on there about that and then last but not least is the social media examiner that's a social media online publication but i've linked you through to their facebook page specifically and that's really the holy grail for facebook advertising marketers and it gives you um loads of creative ideas as well as ways of analyzing your results and um, looking at your results is something I wanted to mention as well before I go away. So obviously you want to see how successful your adverts have been because that's the whole reason why you've set them up. So in order to do that, you need to go on to your adverts manager page, which as I mentioned before is on the left. If you go to the home page, your home page, sorry, it's on the left hand side um, of the page. You'll have things like um, the timeline, friends, events, and it'll be at the bottom of that section there. If you click through onto that, that'll take you to your dedicated advert space. It'll list all the adverts that you're running at the moment and have run in the past. And if you click on those individually, it'll take you through to a page where it lists um, how much money you set, spent finally, which might, might come under budget. And it certainly won't have, <laughs> have gone over it anyway. And it'll also tell you, it'll also give you the insights for your advertising. So this will be... Um, if it's your Facebook page that you've promoted, that'll be the number of likes that you've got to your Facebook page. And then if it's in terms of booster content, you want to look at the reach or the number of people that have seen your advert. It might not be the case they've interacted in any way, but they'll definitely have seen it when it's popped up on their timeline in some way. Um, you also want to look at the number of shares, likes and comments that post has got. And also, crucially, it should give you a click-through rate. So if it was a link through to your website, if it was a, a video, it will indicate the number of people that have clicked through to your website or watched that video, which is which is really useful tool because if you compare different types of content content strands, you can see which one performs the best. So is it written text? Is it video? Is it images? And things of that nature. So again, I hope um, today's session has been useful and um, I hope that you enjoy setting up your Facebook advertise, 
advertisements and that you gather lots of followers from them. Thank you.